I'm placing the electrodes. <laughs> I chose to be here. This was my choice. At least, I think it was. Most of you will believe that you chose to watch this video. We do worry about manipulation by the media and by advertising and by other people and so on. You freely willed it. What is the degree of freedom that you give to the definition of free will? Our choices define us. So if that's what we're talking about, then we don't have free will. But reality may not be so simple. There you go. <laughs>
uh, we're able to reflect on all of this stuff, right? So we're not just kind of uh, following impulse. May I add something? Okay, go ahead, sure. So we have to make a distinction between picking and choosing, or uh, proximal acts of uh, choosing and distal acts of choosing. That is, decisions that require less effort, like picking oranges in the supermarket, are easily done by our subconscious, while our conscious mind can focus on more complex tasks, like whether to accept a job offer, or what to cook for a dinner party, and who to invite. I think a lot of our decision making is playing out in this internal virtual reality of our imagination. And we spend about half of our waking day there imagining this versus that. And some of those imaginings or deliberations are not terribly consequential, like whom to invite for dinner. Others are very consequential, like whom should I marry? Or what country should I live in? And I want to argue that our internal virtual reality of our imagination is where free will is uh, really active. It's not picking, as in the Libet task. It's really an issue of choosing consequential decisions. Right, I'm still hungry. I'm back at the beans. But I'll take some time to avoid any unconscious bean-based biases I may have and deliberate on which to buy. If you want to call free will just our capacity to make intelligent decisions, uh, which is hugely impressive, then I have no problem with that. In that case, you'd want to say, we have lots of free will, other animals have some. Even a tiger can weigh its options. So we have this sort of first order deliberation in common with a tiger. However, in addition, humans have this sort of higher level or second order capacity to deliberate, namely to deliberate about our own future self. And here's the strange thing. I felt much freer randomly clicking buttons for the Libet test than I did when I started to overthink which can of beans to buy, or certainly any of the big life stuff, where all sorts of constraints are put upon the possible choices I can make. But within your constraints, you have a degree of freedom. What does that mean? We do have some freedom to act within the parameters given to us by nature and by our society, and then those parameters that we set for ourselves, like deciding to learn a new language or to go to the gym, or to even to become a, a better person. So do we have free will? Well, it depends on what you choose to call free will. If you want it to be your mind acting independent of your body, neuroscience says probably not. If you want your conscious self to be totally in control, again, probably not. But if you choose to locate free will in our conscious thought, then probably yes. Ironically, whether you choose to believe in free will or not, is a question of choice. When we spoke on the phone, you said you weren't sure about free will, and now you're saying you, we, you don't think we have it. Yeah. Because I'm just waiting for additional scientific evidence. It's just that at the moment, with what we know, it's hard to really believe in free will. Uh, but perhaps uh, somebody, no matter the field in neuroscience, neurobiology or physics, uh, will find a, a new experiment Wait, in order to show that Wait, why did you say physics? Well or not. 